Hello, we are back. Hello. And next up is Parallel. So Simo, what should people get from this lesson? Um, yeah. Like what, how deep are we going? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so this is quite a complicated thing to explain. Uh, so in this lesson, we'll talk about like, like parallel computing is all about like doing stuff that is like, you have multiple workers, multiple CPUs working together at the same time doing the same thing. Like in the array job, we have stuff that like they could happen at a different time at a different place as long as they just happened. Like you had mm -hmm. you had uh, things happening uh, that, that just needed to be done with a different parameter, but they, they didn't have to like have a communication. They didn't have to have like, they didn't have to, each of these jobs were independent and they didn't need to work together. And in parallel computing, it's a different thing because we want to, like, if if in the array jobs we want to do more, in parallel we usually want to do faster. Like, and more isn't always faster. Like, uh, so so quite often the a most efficient way of getting stuff done is to do embarrassingly parallel all these array jobs because, like, if if you do, if you can do like hundred simulations. Um, uh, like if you can do 100 simulations separately, it's usually better than having 100 CPUs running one simulation at a time uh, in, in a sequence. So, so if we look at the analog of the pasta again, like okay. if, if we previously had like these different kinds of pasta that we wanted to do, and now let's say we want to do like, we just want to do more pasta. Like we could have like four cooks with their own uh, own pots do that thing. That would work. Like that 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 would work because uh, like like that would be the array job. We have four cooks there cooking their th things, and they all would produce one pot of pasta, and then we would have four pots of pasta. Let's say, but mm -hmm. we could also have a situation where we just add. We have one cook, but we add more uh, more pots to the mm -hmm. to the stove mm -hmm. so we just do more with one one cook and and in that case usually you get the same results or you should get like if it's if it parallelizes uh in, like optimally you should get the same pasta done in the same time but maybe like when you're you have to move the pots around if you're only one cook there you have to move the pots around some of the time is wasted because you have to do this kind of stuff so it's usually not as efficient to do stuff like just multiply, add more, more pots, add more stoves to a single like uh, single uh, like job. Instead, it's usually better to do this embarrassingly parallel thing. But if you want to do uh, parallel, you usually need to know what your program can do. Like, like it all depends on on the program that you're using. So there are two main paradigms uh, that that are uh, well in HPC and in in general. There's MPI and there's multi-threaded or multi-processing uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And like, if your code has supports MPI, it usually says it. It's it's like on the thin. Mm -hmm. Like if it says that it, it's an MPI program then it's an MPI program. And if it's not an MPI program, then it's not an MPI program. So then it's uh, it might be a, a multiprocessing program. And it's it's usually like hard to tell which one, or it might be hard to tell, but usually if you see something mentioned about like MPI, then you know that, okay, it's MPI program. And if it doesn't mention MPI, but it talks about workers or number of jobs or number of processors or whatever, uh, it's usually, the multiprocessing program like the words get easily mixed up in this field because like everybody can use the words in which way they want so there's no like uh, no one solution usually like to recognize which program you're using mm -hmm. but when it comes to the resource allocation the thing is very simple if your program is multi-threaded or is it uh it's python multiprocessing you need to specify the cpus per task option to get multiple processes uh, for the well, multiple CPUs available for the process. 
So you basically ask the Slurm that, okay, this I'm going to run this job. I want multiple CPUs available. Can you provide them for me? And that's it. That's the end. Like that Slurm basically makes certain that, okay, there's there are CPUs available and that, then it just takes hands off and then it it makes certain that you have a big enough stove basically mm -hmm. it makes certain that you have an have enough burners enough working space to do your work and then it's like goes off but with mpi jobs slurm does a lot more like it launches this kind of a world a network between these many workers so if you have to do like multi-node if you have to do parallel computing where you have multiple like computers working in tandem together. Uh, so if you think about like a big weather weather model or something like that, you might have hundreds of computers creating this kind of own uh, simulation that they all have to do. So this is like the traditional high performance computing, like like which is still very popular, you know, which is like big scale stuff. That's done with via MPI, where Slurm like gives each of these. Uh, tasks it gives them its own like uh, uh own uh, place to work and then it it like makes the communication between these tasks possible and uh for those kinds of jobs you need to use this end tasks option so it, it's like two one or the other there are also hybrid jobs that use the both but we don't want to talk about them here it's too complicated uh, so let's just limit ourselves to these two options. So if your job is an MPI job, you need to talk about tasks. If your job is not an MPI job, you need to talk about number of CPUs. So just how many CPUs you can use. So let's let's go uh, and look at that example of a job. So this in the documentation, there's a lot of stuff uh, about different kinds of like uh what is a multi-threaded multi, what is a multi-process that was asked previously like we don't want to go through that because it's technical and it's i don't think it helps uh there's also talk about open mp which is this kind of if you're coding uh it's an easy way of getting like coding your multi-process stuff but in most cases uh you do something with an already existing uh framework so uh, here's an example of like Python, uh, like this, this is also re relevant for people who use MATLAB or R or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those programs are internally multi-threaded. So there's in Python, there's this NumPy library, which uses these uh, other libraries that are all underneath them, they can utilize multiple processors. And if they see multiple processors, they use multiple processors. So that's how they work. Like if they see resources, like if you ever in your own laptop, you start some simulation and then you notice that the laptop fans turns on and all of your processors are using are in use, that's usually because the program itself like recognizes that there's multiple processors available. So if Richard would, if you want to take the screen and yeah show how to do this example so in the example there's like a simple like this like do this kind of like a linear al algebra uh, calculator pseudo universe for a matrix kind of calculation that is done like multiple times and then the timing is uh it's timed like how what is the yeah. uh, how long does it take to to do this calculation so if we just okay. create a script, I will make it and just I copy paste the whole code. Put everything there. I guess I don't even need to look at the code, do I? Yeah, yeah. Like usually, like if you just see that some pros programs supports multiple processes, you don't need to know how the sources it's made. It's usually like, like it, it if it supports it, it works. Mm -hmm. And do we make a new script. Uh, yeah, let's start with the so, script itself. Like, if you st like, let's not use that. Not do that. Okay, we're doing straight okay. to the script. Yeah, let's. Okay. Yeah, let's go straight to the script. There's an example of how to run it, non it, like. But so this yeah, is let's, let's a go straight to the script. common pattern we see. We have a code, and we have the separate script that controls it, even though in theory yeah. they could be combined with some effort. 
Yeah. So let's see. So, so L time yeah. tasks, two CPUs, yeah. one gigabyte. Okay. Yeah. So these also like this example, it might differ a bit, bit different if you are running in a different cluster because there might be a different Python installation mm -hmm. there available. But so so what 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 new do we see in this group and the main like and especially in the S batch section. Like we see these two lines called CPUs per task and a memory per CPU. Yeah. So, uh, and we also have this end tasks set here, but you should you do don't need to set it. But basically, the idea is that uh, you just want to have basically one of these MPI tasks. Like the tasks number shouldn't be anything else than one, and you just want to have multiple CPUs available for the job. And in, in this case, we set two CPUs for the job. And instead of using the mem, that's just mem, in this case, we we set a memory per G, a CPU. So you can think of the total memory requirement for the job being the memory per CPU multiplied mm -hmm. by the uh, number of CPUs. So basically, and, and it depends. Yeah. Like if you need to, if you want to use more CPUs, you only have to change one place instead of changing the memory separately somehow. Yes. Yeah. So in some cases, your program might be that that the number of like the adding more CPUs doesn't increase the memory requirement of the job. In those cases, uh, you might want to use a, like a flat mem uh, statement. But you can also use this mem per CPU if you know that, okay, like if I add more CPUs, it will add more memory requirements. So you can have these kind of like helpers, helper things here. But basically what, what this, when we now submit the job, like the rest of the thing is like, we, we just use Python via this Anaconda module that has been installed. And then we, when, then we run the code. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's something that, uh, uh, that some program that supports multi-threading yeah. so should i so if it? we now yeah if you now submit it okay it claims it's done yeah if you look at the output i'm removing mm, all the of, yeah okay so can you see python open mp dot out if you don't have it noticed here, I push tab and then it automatically completes many of the things. So I can type file names really quickly. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Needs. Mm. Oh, okay. The the script isn't like uh yeah. Can you can you do the vw get command there? Like the co Python command, like the Python script is so, only a partial of the script, mm -hmm. or it needs to import time. It, yeah, it, it, it's can missing just, some imports. Are there more? Yeah, you can download it missing. there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's import time and import numpy. Or from. Yeah, yeah, you can just uh, download it. Yeah. Okay, should I just download it? Yeah, I think it's okay. like in the example there's like the, the command to download it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. a bit unfortunate. Yeah, we we'll have to uh, update the example. Okay. Yeah. There. So. Yeah, yeah. If you're typing it along, then do notice that this the uh there's this download command. Okay. Yeah. So now if you try it again, okay. probably so it's a bit longer. Should we see what the differences are? Probably a sure. waste of time, but okay. Yeah, we see yeah. it's told in port. Yeah, yeah, there's several more things. Yeah, actually, there's yeah, a lot there's more a there. additional output. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's also a question about like, uh, like open MP and open MPI. So there's there's this kind of like a mess of like technical yar jargon in in the HPC <laughs> world. So there's this open MP standard which tells like how do you com how do you write code uh, that does this parallelization using this open MP 
paradigm. And then there's MPI, which is this message passing interface, which is uh, like, how do, you, how do you do this message passing in? Like, it's a standard. And then there's open MPI, which is a, like a implementation of this MPI standard. So, so yeah, it's, it's like, it's the uh, computer science world or like, yeah. Like whenever there's some, somebody who, who gets like technical, they start to make up these stupid <laughs> naming conventions and you have to like, this, this, it's unfortunate that you just have to like uh, spot the difference basically uh, whenever there's like, when, are we talking about MP or MPI? And it's, yeah. yeah. Annoying. Okay. So let's try so, like it, it took uh, yeah, 13, 13 seconds. seconds. So, so let's try with one CPU, how, how it would okay. behave. Uh, like what, what would be the, nano if it. we edit the, yeah. Uh, we need to nano the submit file. Yeah. So one CPU per task. Yeah. Okay. So, the, yeah. And a batch it. Yeah. And so running. Yeah, it, it will take a bit longer. So, uh, so what's the important part is here is that like the requirements part, like your program, like. If you don't know if your program uh, is capable of utilizing multiple processes, you can always try giving it multiple mm -hmm. processes. But the main thing is then like to figure out whether it actually utilized them. After this has finished, like if you look at the output now. 22 seconds. Yeah. So we saw like previously it was 13 seconds and now it was 22. If you look at Slurm history uh, for, uh, like for these jobs, Let's see yeah we all yesterday we already uh used this sf command to uh to see uh, like how uh, to monitor the uh, like how the program was behaving mm -hmm. so if you want to run sf for let's say the one cpu job first which is here yeah uh yeah the second one yeah So uh, yeah, or yeah. In yeah. this case, like we noticed that yeah, it took twenty five seconds to run. So that is the the wall time, a wall clock time, and it used uh used ninety percent of the CPU. So so with one CPU, it this CPU utilization was ninety percent. So if we look at now the the two CPU uh, job that you run previously. I like the SF of that. Yeah. The wall time is 15 seconds, which is less. But yeah. the CPU and, uh, usage is more. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that the uh, it used two cores per node, and the CPU efficiency is still pretty much the same. So it, mm -hmm. it actually managed to utilize both of the CPUs. So if you're unsure if your program supports multiple CPUs, it's a good idea to just like give it a few mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. if the CPU efficiency is good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also this kind of like, like if you know that your program does support multiple CPUs, it's also a good idea to make certain that the program if in the if in the program there's some sort of like variable or something like how many processors to use like in in matlab mm -hmm. you might have like a uh, what is the size of this parallel pool that you create yeah. or whatever like some sort of number that describes how many processors you want to use mm -hmm. you want to make certain that that number matches the cpus you're asking uh, because mm -hmm. otherwise you might end up in a situation where you launch your program launches uh more cpus than it actually has access to so so your program tries to use let's say 20 cpus but it only has access to let's say one mm. and and then there's like 20 20 processors fighting for the one cpu so basically you have like you try to cook 20 pots of uh, of pasta on one stove mm -hmm. and of course like it's going to be like hell you're not going to boil any of the water like if, if you have to like cook every pot for a second and then move another pot in there and you have to constantly swap which pot you want to put into the stove into the burner yeah so it's it's going to be like a mess so so you always want to make certain that 
how many burners you basically request. So in this case, you, you request two or one. Uh, yeah. You always want to make certain that your program puts as many like pots to those burners. Mm -hmm. So you always have like the system utilized and also you don't have it overutilized. So basically like it can go wrong both ways. If your code doesn't support parallelism, then it might not use any more CPUs. And if it supports it, but doesn't know about Slurm and how Slurm tries to tell a program how many CPUs are available, then it might say, oh, I'm here on a computer with 20 processors, but it only has assign been assigned four of them, and but try to use 20. So, so many things that can yes. go wrong. Yeah, but it's usually a good idea to just test and use the SF. Like mm -hmm. the main thing is like you if you know how to do division, it's quite simple. So mm -hmm. if you if you like launch a job and you let it run for some time with one CPU, like you, you launch some job with one CPU and you get mm -hmm. some sort of like runtime. If you yeah. increase the number of processors, you expect like in a perfect world, the uh, amount of time uh, used to run like the amount of time required uh, for the job to complete, if you increase the number of processors, is the like the time with one CPU divided by the number of processors. So you should like, if you just divide the number, the time that it took uh, to run with one processor with the number of processors uh, that you're now running with, you should expect like to get, uh, yeah, you expect like uh, the time to be divided. Mm -hmm. So so. Uh, if if you see some discrepancy, you probably know that okay, it's not working as intended. Mm -hmm. Like if if there's some sort of like a, like okay, suddenly like the yeah. times don't match. Like I, I I increased the number of processors by two, mm -hmm. but the time didn't drop at all. Then you know that okay, like like it didn't work. Yeah. So okay. So yeah, and that's about all, all that we can say about uh, like. There's all, all kinds of talk in the in the documentation about how to do uh, like how about these multi-process jobs, but mm -hmm. like it depends so much on the program so that we can't get general use or general yeah. instructions. But but then yeah, it, if it's if it doesn't say MPI, then it most likely will use the other other paradigm. Mm -hmm. The MPI is then a lot more complicated because mm -hmm. like. Uh, but but usually it's 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 complicated on surface level because usually like you don't compile your own MPI programs you use MPI programs that other people have mm -hmm. provided. So what MPI MPI is complicated because it creates this kind of like a communication between. Uh, it, it creates this kind of a communication between multiple different nodes. So mm -hmm. so and for that to work. Uh, it needs to know all about like system libraries, uh, network mm -hmm. libraries. It needs to like do so that you can get like information from ac across the nodes fast. Like you can have a lot of communication. So so if you think about like traditional MPI program would be like let's say you have a you have some sort of like a finite difference method or uh, you have let's say you calculate a grid. You have a grid uh, of of let's say you have weather data that is describes like a place or something and then you have like a grid that describes the the place <laughs> describes let's say uh, air over Finland or something like that and each grid point represents some point in space and each for each grid point you have one MPI worker that calculates or may, for a few grid points you have an MPI worker that calculates what happened in that grid point and then all of those have to communicate with their neighbors. So it's it's a huge amount of communication usually. And that's why it needs these special special libraries. But usually MPI programs, they 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 usually work that you load this MPI module, which is provided by the system administrator, because that MPI module needs to be like very it needs to work. <laughs> and it, usually there's only few versions that that are like actually tested that actually work. And then you compile your program against that version, and then you you do stuff. If your program is provided by the systems administrators, and it uses these MPI programs, you should use those MPI libraries that it provides because, like, they, if if the 
if the libraries don't work together, then nothing works. So mm -hmm. uh, you should utilize it. But it's in the case of the MPI programs, um, if you, uh, Richard, go to the Hello World example there. Mm, up uh, above, I guess. Yeah, it's up above. Uh, world. Okay. Here. Yeah. Over here. Like, uh, typically, what you would do is that you load some compiler. So in this case, in Alto, you would load this GCC compiler and this MPI library. Uh, in other sites, the version numbers might be different. Uh, the model names might be different. But usually, you load, load some compiler and some version of MPI, and then you compile your code. And if you want to reach it, show the, the Slurm script, Mm. Here we go. Yes, in the, in the Slurm script, you typically tell the number of tasks. So, so instead of the number of CPUs, we are talking about MPI tasks, and this is because like the networking and all of mm. that jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you are working with MPI programs, uh, you specify this number of tasks, and if you're not, then uh, well, yeah, there's uh, you're you're working with the other other paradigm. Uh, there's also lots of like in this documentation. There's how to like if you're going to do MPI programs, if you're going to do these large scale MPI programs, there's documentation here how to spread the workers evenly, how to how to like optimize, like how to choose the number of workers and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, complicated stuff, but it's it's not something that most of the users will use nowadays. Like the HPC used to be that everybody was just doing MPI, but now stuff has changed a lot in the last 20 years. Uh, and, and there's much more multiprocessing and much more data parallelism. So much more array jobs. So those are the like the ones that you probably, like if you're not in physics, you most likely will do, <laughs> yeah. do, do the other stuff. Like, like the, for the physics people, like you're, stuck with the MPI programs because the problems are usually so big that they need yeah. the MPI to solve them. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes left. And did we already say that we didn't plan on doing dedicated exercises here? I guess that should be um, obvious by now. Should we do some demos yeah. or something? Like some exercises as demos or... Yeah, maybe we should do like okay. the the exercise one as demo. So if you okay. scroll down to exercise one, like because like this this will show uh, the concept, uh, mm. like in detail. So yeah, okay. So let's see. Um, here we are. So I'm running s run. Uh, CPUs per task equals four. So I'm telling, I guess there's one task and four CPUs. And then I run yes. host name, which tells me what computer it's running on. So which, um, which of the, uh, um, the type of paradigms is this? This is the that open would be MP the multi or multi-processing one yes yes so, so in that this case like what we are just asking is that similarly to the array like the serial job where we asked for memory resources we asked for mm -hmm. time resources now we're just asking for cpu resources mm -hmm. so just ju just saying to the slurm that okay like whenever i get the the kitchen i want to be in i would like mm -hmm. there to be four burners like four burners available for me. Could you make it possible? And then Slurm says that yeah, sure. Like I can, I can figure you a place to work. And yeah. here are the four burners. But when we are running now the hostname command, of course the hostname command doesn't care about the four for <laughs> yeah. CPUs. So, but but in theory, if there would be a program here that four. yeah, it could use them. Yeah. Okay. So, so now if we try the number of tasks. And tasks equals four. So this is the MPI paradigm. Yes. I guess. So it's waiting. Yeah. So now that we launched this, we ask it to provide us four MPI workers. So you see that now the output is like quadrupled. So we get four times the output. 
So this is because the hostname command doesn't understand anything about MPI. Mm. So what happens is that it duplicates itself and like in different nodes, we get, or in this case, the same node, but in different places, we get four CPUs, mm -hmm. but we have like it four workers that the all- same things yeah. four times. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically now we are asking for like, we want four cooks, but the, we didn't ask if they all speak the same language. Mm. So, so basically we asked or for like, like, can we get four cooks? Uh, and and they, one, one speaks Italian, one was Finnish, one speaks Polish right. and one speaks uh, Indian. And, and, and like not, none of them know how to communicate with each other. But is it like they're not being told to work with other people? Because I think normally- Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like- like they, they're just, yeah, like they're not told there's even anyone else going on in this kitchen. So you're giving everyone the same recipe and they all do it independently because they weren't told, here's your leader and the leader will tell you which part to do or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in this, like if you, if your code doesn't use MPI and you try to use this end task, what you have, what happens is exactly what happens here that you launch the same program multiple times. And in those case, uh, like you, in best case, one of them finishes and three of them crash <laughs> like here. Mm -hmm. And in the worst case, they all try to like write the same output file and, mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. they mess up your data and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so you don't want to do this, uh, like if your code doesn't use MPI. Yeah. So let's try the number of nodes. We're, there's also this okay. option. So for big big MPI jobs, you might want to do multiple nodes and spread the stuff mm. across multiple uh, nodes. Does end tasks automatically take multiple nodes if you have multiple, if if you have so many tasks? I, I think the default is that if you specify a number of nodes, you get one CPU. You get the number of tasks will automatically get Mm -hmm. multiplied to the number of nodes, but I'm not certain. I'm not completely certain. Okay. But uh, like like this this brings to mind like if you don't know what the program is doing, like <laughs> usually it's it's like like don't trust the defaults, try to like yeah. actually set the values that <laughs> you want it to use. So in this yeah. case we would get like four different nodes that uh or tasks in four different nodes. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, so so the main thing is that like you know what kind of parallelism your code supports. If it doesn't support it, then uh, tough luck. Then it's better to use the embarrassingly parallel thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to code your parallel code yourself, it's good idea to check out like many of these. Like you can check MPI, you can check OpenMP, you can check like there's a huge bunch of different libraries and systems that provide parallelization. But mm -hmm. but usually it's it's better to use like ready-made products that somebody has already mm -hmm. written because like yeah. uh, in lots of, if you don't, if it's not optimized, then lots of time can be used in like uh, do doing nothing basically. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good idea to, because like the, the, there's always in every program, there's going to be time that is, is serial time that cannot be parallelized in, yeah. it's like a, it's, it's pro provable by mathematics so mm -hmm. uh it like you cannot like parallelize everything in your program so it's good idea to check like what is possible and what is not and usually the embarrassingly parallel is the best way to parallelize mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe we should make a flow chart of the best way to do things but anyway, yeah. If uh, you want, yeah. yeah. If you quickly want to switch to my screen, I will quickly show this. Like I, I don't know if this helps. Maybe it helps somebody. Maybe I'll mm -hmm. make a graph out of this to the documentation. So basically, <laughs> this this is kind of like a hierarchical structure of what the jobs can be. So typically, you can have like an array job. You can either have an array job or not, and it basically just copy paste everything underneath it. Like if you, it just sets the array index, and then everything underneath is is as it is. Then each job can have its own requirements in these spatch comments. So when we write this serial job, you can have this yeah. spatch comments, and each job step that we run with S run uh, inherits the requirements from the main mm -hmm. main job. Mm -hmm. And each uh, 
job step can have multiple tasks, like these MPI tasks, but only for the MPI jobs. Otherwise, the number of tasks will be one, and each of these tasks can have one or more CPUs allocated for it. Mm -hmm. So it's this complicated mess, but like you don't have to think about it too hard. The easiest thing to like think about is like, does my program say something about number of workers? And if it does, then just try <laughs> using multiple CPUs. And if it doesn't, then yeah, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's Do we have any questions in the hmm. do Nothing. Let's check. Yeah. Uh, my hands are getting a bit full here. So what comes <laughs> next is a talk by CSC. So when you need even more resources than there are at Alto, then this is a good option. And it's not just computing. There's resources for data, secure data, many different things. And I think we'll hear about various of these. And then after that, we come back and we talk about GPUs. So the GPU part is not about writing your own GPU code because most people don't do that, but about running things on GPUs. And that turns out to be quite important for many people these days. So with that, should we go to a break and we'll be back at zero zero? Yeah. Okay. See you all then.